Today we're going to demonstrate a left total shoulder replacement. This is a 54-year-old physician who has had more than a three-year history of left shoulder pain, which is now debilitating with his activities of daily living, not only his work responsibilities. We do check range of motion under anesthesia to confirm that this is what we see preoperatively. So we put the patient's arm comfortably at their side. His external rotation is at least a 60 degrees. This is a useful parameter for us because we've decided that when patients have a problem with external rotation, uh, then we may need to modify our approach to the shoulder joint to try to improve their rotation. And generally speaking, we can gain around 40 to 50 degrees of external rotation during a procedure. So therefore, when a patient has less than 20 degrees of external rotation, we would typically take our subscapularis directly off of the bone, and that will give us a little bit more room in the subscapularis, and it will allow us to get close to that 50 to 60 degrees of increased external rotation. When the uh, external rotation is more than 20 degrees, and we know that we're able to get 40 or 50 degrees with our standard approach, we typically will take a trans tennis approach, which will be demonstrated in this case because of this patient's external rotation. We can also check their ability to forward elevate, and so we'll see the arm go up in this position here, and we can easily proceed uh, beyond 135 degrees. And then we also check for posterior capsular tightness, and we bring the arm in abduction here, and we internally rotate, and we can see again this patient has approximately 45, 50 degrees, and uh, with respect to his body, which is at an angle, and those are all good parameters that we will not have to do an extensive posterior release, but our standard release on the glenohumeral joint. We've uh, called a surgical timeout, which is done uh, in all of our cases to confirm that this is the correct side and that the patient is positioned properly, our implants are available, and that they've received antibiotics before we start the procedure. We also have marked the skin or marked our site, which has been an uh, initiative that was started by the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery years ago that helps to make sure that there is uh, no incidence of wrong site surgery in our operating room. Our approach is going to be a deltal pectoral approach, and we have some standard landmarks. The upper part of our incision is along the clavicle, which we can palpate underneath the skin, and we can mark that area here. And the lower part of our incision will be at the top of the axillary fold, and we can just draw a line here to mark the inferior aspect of our incision. The other uh, useful landmark is the coracoid process, which again we can palpate and feel that it's in this area here. And this will tell us where the delta pectoral interval is. The standard approach for many years was more of a vertical approach, a slightly lateral, which is very good for exposure to the humerus. However, it does compromise your exposure to your glenoid. So when we begin our exposure to the glenoid, we start it actually with our skin incision, and we do that by moving it slightly medial, right in line with the delta pectoral interval, which is marked by the uh, groove that you can feel or palpate using a pen or another kind of marker. And we'll just draw that line straight on out in preparation for our surgical procedure. Now, this incision, we do not have to use the entire extent of the incision, uh, but this is an extensile approach to the shoulder, and if there was a problem, such as a humerus fracture or additional pathology distally, we could extend this incision along the lateral aspect of the arm and proceed uh, more inferior. We'll go ahead and take an IABAN drape. The IABAN uh, accomplishes uh, the task of holding our drapes in position throughout the surgical procedure, and of course it helps improve our sterile barrier to any type of infection or contamination. We'll then finalize our draping, sealing off from the anesthesia team. Once the draping's uh, completed, we will then anesthetize the skin uh, with a local anesthetic. Our patients routinely receive a interscaling block, which is then complemented by a general endotracheal anesthesia. And this has worked very well both for interoperative management of the patient, but also for postoperative management. The patients are capable of getting up and out of bed after the surgical procedure, the night of the procedure, and this helps to improve the recovery from the, from the operation.